Well, Lisa Milad Miladnik joins us via Skype to discuss her newest book, which I'm holding right here, True Radiance. Lisa, how are you? I'm doing just fine, and I just want to start off by saying I was so happy to hear that someone else cooked their turkey upside down. <laughs> oh, did you do that? I most certainly did, and it was delicious. It is. Well, what happened was she said the popper's not popping, so I opened the oven. See, I'm getting in more trouble as we go here. And and I said, honey, the popper's not popping because it's upside down. It's it's not going to pop. But Shirley, it does taste good. Shirley is vindicated by Lisa. Yeah, but. Yeah. The thing is, she did it more than once, by the way, just, yeah. Well, Lisa, tell us, what is True Radiance about? True Radiance is about the authentic beauty of the soul. It's about that deepening connection that happens over time in the interior, the deepest, most intimate place in our souls as we grow closer to Jesus Christ. And we all know that we were made in the image and likeness of God. We get told that a lot, but what does it mean? It means that as we persevere in prayer over time, as we mature in the spiritual life, we live and love more as God does. And that helps us to find our authentic selves, our truest selves, and our authentic beauty because that connection with Christ is our connection to all that is true and holy and beautiful. Then that becomes more impactful through us. We become more radiant. St. Faustina said in her diaries, and this is the perfect time in the Holy Year of Mercy to talk about her, if so many times she mentioned the radiance of souls, and that has everything to do with humble reliance on God. Nisi, you're, you're, you're speaking my language here because uh, I've always been very, um, very attentive to, um, for example, in church, the way things look when people come in, mm -hmm. the beauty of the music, uh, you know, the, the church and its, its set up, you know, flowers and all that kind of thing. But I got to ask you, why is there a connection between the church's understanding of beauty and its value and then evangelization? Oh, this is such a great concept. Thank you for that question. Father, um, the reason is that beauty is a concept that belongs to God. God speaks to us through beauty. And so we evangelize through beauty when a person enters a church. And we hear stories from time to time of people who have had profound conversion experiences because they walked into a Catholic church and sensed the presence of God. And it's not just the beauty of the church, the architecture, the art, the, the bells and smells, I like to say, the beauty of the liturgy, the music, um, the falling and the rising of the congregation at worship. But our souls access the intangibles of God through our senses. It's one thing to be intellectually converted, and that's important too. too. We need to know God. We need to be able to think about the person we're falling in love with. But beauty can reach us when sometimes when nothing else can. Mm -hmm. Can you share a bit about your ideas of feminine re receptivity as a model for everyone's relationship to God, Lisa? Yes, this is an idea that's, uh, that you see a lot in the writings of the church. This idea that, the, that Christ is the groom and the church, we are the, the bride. And so Christ woos our souls. He's not a domineering, heartless master. He is a bridegroom. He wants us to fall in love. And so when we are receptive and open to him, then he is allowed to come in and transform our souls. And because St. John Paul II did such a beautiful job illuminating the qualities of authentic femininity when he talked about the feminine genius, one of those qualities is receptivity. And we see that in Our Lady, especially that fiat, that openness to the will of God in which we discover our true selves and our authentic purpose. And so many of the greatest male saints and holy fathers have been devoted to Our Lady as that model, the disciple of the disciples, that beautiful receptivity that allows the Holy Spirit to move us in the depths of our souls. Lisa, let's just talk a little uh, bit about aging for a second. For a second, uh, I find that you know television makeup uh, hides some of the wrinkles, uh, but uh, beyond that, how did writing this book impact your own experience of aging? Tremendously. Uh, I already had been, because of the interviews that I did with women from their 20s up through their 90s, I was already intellectually convinced that the second half of a woman's life is the very best time of her life. And it's because of that spiritual maturity and that authentic connection with Christ. But then uh, some things happened to me, and one of them I write about in detail in the first chapter of my book. And it's a, a moment when I really had a confrontation with my own extra pounds and wrinkles and things when I was not looking my best. I was exhausted in a hotel room far from home, about to give a presentation the next day. And God gave me a glimpse, a beautiful, luminous glimpse into the way he sees me. 
And it was all beauty. It was all about through the action of grace in my life, little acts of mercy and love that had transformed my family life. He showed me through my vocation as a wife and a mother how he was increasing the beauty of my soul. He didn't focus on my sins, which I have plenty of, you know, confessing the same ones over and over again. And God is shrinking them little by little. Thanks be to God. But, and he didn't show me the catastrophic failures of my past. He showed me the way he sees me. And he saw my beauty. And he showed me that I was increasing in beauty. Not like the world says that older women are losing their relevance and their beauty. And there's this incredibly impossible false standard that causes women and even young girls to really hurt themselves over this, whether it's surgery or eating disorders. God showed me how he sees me. And it changed my life. How, how's the reaction been towards the book, Lisa? You talk about some ladies who came up and talked to you. Tell me about that. Yeah, I, I have women telling me that it means so much to them that they're crying reading that or, or they're just, they're feeling like they're not alone anymore. You, when you look at women, I, I've talked to a woman at a retreat um, who said to me, please pray for me because I'm about to go to a family wedding and everybody else in the family, including women in their 20s, have all had facial surgeries. And here I am in midlife with a list bit of sagging and wrinkles and stuff. And I have to go face these people. And so I marked it on my calendar and prayed for her that day because when you see these photos of women who have been addicted to plastic surgery and they look that strange, inhuman, frozen look on their faces, please be compassionate. We want to, When I was a young woman, I used to mock those women until it started to happen to me. And then I realized that behind all of that is suffering. And we really need to embrace women and see the beauty in them and remind them that their authentic dignity in the eyes of God is increasing as they grow closer to him. Lisa, what's your parish, by the way? Because you must be a mover and a shaker wherever <laughs> that church is. Well, right now I'm at St. Mary's in Roslyn, New York. Um, a dear friend of mine, the pastor there, has moved around a little bit, and I'm kind of following him because <laughs> he feeds our souls so beautifully. He just finished a Marian consecration uh, and just, just sent shockwaves into the community with it. It's absolutely magnificent parish. He is a wise priest to make sure he brings uh, a beautiful and wise woman like you wherever he goes. And I have, I have, I have to tell you, Lisa, I, I just was looking in the mirror today. I said, oh, my gosh, I have, I have gray here now, here and here. And oh, you didn't know that? I, I didn't know that. Well, I guess you did. I didn't. Well, where can people learn more about True Radiance? Well, they can Google True Radiance and find uh, it's on Amazon. It's also at Franciscan Media's catalog. But also um, at my website, AmazingCatechist.com, I have a page devoted to my writing and speaking and all of that, and you can find it there as well. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a pleasure, and we hope to talk to you again for your next book. And Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you. God bless. All right. You too. Bye-bye.